This is going on all over the country. We've got a, a particular situation right here in, uh, in central Iowa. Um, what are parents supposed to do? What are they supposed to look for? Well, parents need to know where their children are online. So whether they use software that allows them to monitor or whether they have all their children's passwords, parents need to be checking regularly. Mm -hmm. And if there's a change in their child's mood or they're spending a lot of time online or they just seem down, parents need to see if they can figure out what's going on. When kids are online, unsupervised, they can be doing or saying anything to anyone with anyone. Mm. Isn't, the, isn't one of the big problems, though, that it's almost impossible to supervise them? I mean, once you give your kid the smartphone, you're out of the loop, aren't you? It's really hard, especially because parents are usually about 10 steps behind kids in terms of what websites they're even using. Mm -hmm. So the only really what, but there is software that parents can put on in order to track where their kids are going and monitor their kids' um, internet uses usage on their smartphones, on their iPads, iTouch, and on their computers. Mm. But it's like another full-time job for parents. Yeah, we're actually just putting a poll up on my blog at whoradio.com. We're, we're simply asking parents to be honest and tell us if they've even heard of some of these uh, sites uh, like Kick and Ask FM and that, and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, because I'm going to bet that they haven't. And the other thing is it's not going to appear on data plans if these kids are smart enough to use them where there's Wi-Fi. Absolutely. Right. You're, you're 100% right. So part of it is having an open dialogue with your children and asking them what the cool websites are. If you're a clever parent, you don't ask your kid necessarily where they're going. You ask where other kids are going mm -hmm. <laughs> online. And then you do your best to go and, and see what's happening. But if you see changes in your child's mood or he or she is starting to avoid school or not want to go or seems depressed or withdrawn or any changes, then you really have to put on your parent's detective hat and see if you can get to the bottom of what's going on because maybe it is bullying or cyberbullying. Mm. Now, of course, uh, that's going to help you if your kid is the victim. How do you figure out if your kid is the perpetrator? Well, it's harder to know if your child's the perpetrator, but if you, if, you kind of need to have your radar up. If your kid has a really nasty streak to her or you hear her saying nasty things to other kids, then that might give you, or about other kids, and they have a really biting way of talking about other people, that may be a time to say, look, you need to be really careful because anything that you post online is going to follow you. Mm -hmm. And if it's appropriate, talking about this case in Florida where 12 and 14 got arrested. Mm -hmm. so, and and did, aren't they going after one of the mums as well, by the way? Yeah, but it sounds like that was for something else. Oh, and okay. hitting the siblings, but it really, I mean, that mom was defending that her daughter would never do or say anything inappropriate, but it's not clear mm -hmm. that this mom would have the best judgment or even know mm -hmm. what is inappropriate and what isn't. Uh, and I noticed you kept saying she. Is this a, a problem more for, for girls than it is for boys? It is a bit, of a, it's a bit more of a problem for girls than for boys. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a problem for boys, too, because boys will spread rumors, too, but girls are going to be the rumor spreaders and bulliers online. But, no, you've got to watch both genders. Okay. Uh, now, you, you, um, uh, you get to see some of these kids. Do you get to see both sides? I mean, the, the, the bullied and the bulliers? I'm more often brought the, bull, the kids who are being bullied. I'm more often brought the victims because mm -hmm. they're being bullied. But what happens is there are enough times where I see other kids who aren't brought to me for that reason, but then the more we talk to them, the more I find out that they are actually bullying. Mm. Hmm. Um, okay, so this is a, I mean, this is a relatively new phenomenon. Uh, the bullying isn't, but uh, the place it's taking place is. Um, and uh, I don't know that parents are even prepared to this. They have the tools to deal with this. Who does? I mean, this is whether your child 15 or 20 years ago was shoving a kid into the locker or doing other nasty things. It's hard to deal with. It's hard if, you're, if your child's being victimized, and it's hard if your child is victimizing. Mm -hmm. but none of us, there's no guide for any of this. No, so, but in terms of what you see, I mean, here you are, you're a, you're a, a psychologist, you work with this stuff on a, on a daily basis. Um, in terms of what you see, how has this changed in the last 10 years? Well, it's changed because social media has changed and mm -hmm. taken over so much of our lives. So spreading rumors now, you know, it, it's like wildfire. 
Okay, so, you know, so-and-so slept with so-and-so, and and it may may not have a grain of truth in it, but, you know, they're they're spreading the rumor. Once the rumor starts, there's no way to stop it. Right, whether you're sending a picture Mm -hmm. or you're spreading a lie or a half-truth, I mean, it just goes like lightning. Mm. So it changed tremendously because then also, if you were being bullied 10 or 15 years ago, when you went to school, you were tortured, but when you came home, you were safe. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, you're not safe anywhere because every time you look at your phone or you turn on your computer, it's in your face. And, you know, but parents really need to, if a child's being bullied or is bullying, you've got to remove the technology from the child and not worry for the moment about that you're going to isolate your child socially because your first order of business is to keep your child safe. And if your child doesn't have good enough judgment on how to use social media, then you've got to be their judgment for them. Mm. And I mean, are there uh, are there useful tools? Are there apps that people can uh, can get a hold of that would uh, keep them in tune with with what's going on? Because as I say, you know, a, a lot of parents are going to look at their kid's phone, okay? Um, because they may ask the, hey, where do the cool kids go? And right. may not get an answer. But right. um, <laughs> if you're smart, I'm, I'm so grateful that you know my kids are now grown. Uh, my youngest is 22, uh, so I'm so grateful that I'm in that position. But, but you have to look at their phones, don't you? And then you see um, you see an app called Kick, which you right. have never heard of. And isn't that the point where you say, "Oh, okay, so what does Kick do?" Is you know, is, you is that like a soccer on. soccer app? What does that do? Right. Or you just go on and you just open it and you just see, and your child says, "That's my phone. You can't look." And you say, "Well, I own the phone, and you aren't really that entitled to privacy." And if there's nothing I shouldn't see, then you don't need to worry. Mm. I mean, it doesn't sound that nice, but, you know, you as the parent need to supervise because mm. if your child does something that leads to somebody hurting themselves, you're going to be held responsible. Mm. And kids really aren't entitled to privacy when you have a concern about what they're doing. If you go to commonsensemedia.com, Common Sense Media, I think they have some apps. If you just go to Stop Bullying or Stop Cyberbullying, mm-hmm. they've got some apps. And if you Google child safe monitoring software, you'll find some. I, I, you know, I don't off the top of my head have any sure. specific recommendations, but they're no, definitely no. out there, and it really just takes the tiniest bit of searching. Okay. We're in the middle of a conversation with uh, Dr. Wendy Rice. She's from uh, the Rice Psychology Group in Tampa, Florida. Um, we're talking about cyberbullying because it's happening right in our, on our own doorstep here in Urbandale with uh, several Urbandale Middle School students now uh, identified as the victims of cyberbullying after recent posts to a social networking site. Uh, you can join that conversation at 284-1040-800-469-4295. Right now we're going to take a, a brief time out to check on the roads and then we'll continue the conversation here on News Radio 1040 WH. Dr. Wendy Rice, she's from the Rice Psychology Group in Tampa Bay, Florida. Uh, Wendy, we've just actually put a poll up on uh, on my blog at whoradio.com. Uh, we've just put five, uh, I think it's five, five uh, of these sites that people's have made, that people's kids are going to that they may not have heard uh, of. That will be quite an interesting result when we get that. Uh, we want to take some calls, if we may, Wendy. Sure. All right, let's bring uh, Larry on. Hi, Larry. You're on with Dr. Wendy Rice. Yeah, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, Simon keeps touching on, uh, you know, his daughter, youngest daughter being 22, and, you know, he's glad he don't have to deal with that. But I was just, I'm 25, and I've got people on Facebook that are just as old as me, if not older, and it seems like does bullying really have an age limit? Mm. That's Mm. a great question. Um, I think that some people don't seem to have an age limit for bullying, and some people don't seem to know what's appropriate to post or how to talk to other people. I also think it's really important to remember that because you can't see somebody's face and you can't hear their tone of voice, it's so easy for things to be misunderstood or taken, you know, out of context when it's online. Right, and there's a lot of vicious people out there that really don't care what they say to people or who care the effect it has on people. I'm just, 
to, uh, you would hope someone that age would be able to deal with it, but do, are they really able to deal with it? Mm, it's a very right. good point, Larry. I thank you very much for, uh, for making it. And it is a good point because uh, I have a very active uh, uh, Facebook for the, for the show, and, uh, you know, I'm on there all the time. And I, uh, uh, People can be really mean to each other. I do have to referee. It's absolutely true. Right. I think personally it's okay to block who are inappropriate on your social media site. Yeah, uh, and if it was a personal page, I probably would, but this, this being a public page, I, I've never done that. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go down that road, especially on, uh, on National Free Speech Week, uh, Wendy, <laughs> which, right. which it is this week. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so uh, have you ever conducted polls about what these parents have heard of and haven't heard of? I have not. So mm. I'll be interested to hear your results. Mm. Okay, so you, you've covered uh, some of the things for parents to uh, watch for of the, uh, the kid that might be being bullied and, uh, and some advice which seems very straightforward, which is, I mean, I can summarize it in, in uh, just a couple of words. Be a parent. Sorry, that was three right. words. Well done. Uh, for the, for if you think your kid might be the uh, the person doing the bullying. Um, so, I mean, it, it, and yet... So much of this stuff goes on that parents seem shocked when their, their kid kills himself or tries to kill himself or, or unfortunately goes in and tries to shoot up a school. We have another one of those today, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you really have to be attuned to the sign. Mm. And whether you think your child's the perpetrator or the victim, you've got to be aware. And really, you need to, especially, I mean, if you think your child is being a bully, you've got to really be aware of how you treat other people and how you talk about other people because so much of that starts at home. Mm. By the time people get to you, is it too late? No, definitely not. If I thought it was too late, then there would be no point in doing what I'm doing because I have to believe that people can change and mm -hmm. mean people can get nicer and sad people can get less sad. Mm. So, no, I don't think it's too late. Sure. Um, so if... Um if you've got a kid that's being bullied and they, they come to you, simplistically, are you just trying to help them deal with it? Or are you, I mean, what are you doing? No, I'm dealing with it practically. Like, where are you being bullied? How can we help you deal with that? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm coaching the parents on, you got to print this stuff out and bring it to the school or bring it to the police because kids can't be allowed to get away with it. Mm -hmm. I am looking at a child's posture and how they carry themselves to see if there are things that they can do, if they have friends at school who can rally around them. You know, we're kind of going at it at every angle. You know, how can I empower this child to not sort of succumb to the negative messages that are being steered at them, and how do we stop it at the same time? Mm. Uh, uh, Dr. Wendy Rice, thank you very much. If people want to hook up with you, they can do that at ricepsychology.com, ricepsychology.com, and uh, uh, we'll keep you on, on hand. Till my, uh, till my youngest daughter gets her PhD in psychology at FSU, uh, we'll, 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 that's what she's doing right now, seriously. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep you on hand. So, uh, okay. So thanks thank very you. much for taking the time. We really do appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a serious problem of our times. We've got the poll up uh, on the website right now, whoradio.com please take the time to fill it out and be honest we want to know if you've heard of these sites or not news radio 1040 who who radio traffic